It is now Friday, which is the fifth day of our cycle, which means our uh, sunflower has undergone four complete days of germination and they're ready to uncover. Uh, now I say they're ready to uncover uh, for two reasons. One is because ideally we're uh, uncovering them on day four or after four days of growth, on day five actually, and because I'm seeing the germination. Now what I might have done is gone, well, these look a little bit behind, I'm gonna give them another day or another half day, but it's the beginning of day five, it's almost perfect timing, it's almost exactly 96 hours since germination uh, started, so I'm, we're gonna go ahead and uncover, so let's get into that. Just like the wheatgrass, we have two reps here. So I'm gonna uncover these as I go. And I'm just gonna bring this up over here. <laughs> and see how it looks. I'm expecting slightly different results with my sunflower and wheatgrass. So this will be interesting to see. And already getting a very interesting look at things here. Okay, so those are uncovered there. I'm gonna do the other one, just give you a quick look at this one. So as I go, uh, definitely, you can definitely see the difference in germination rates, a little bit of mold in here. I'm not seeing anything too much of concern, but definitely differences in height and in variability. You can see some of the trays of these quite tall ones that snuck out over the sides and other trays are not so, uh, you're not seeing that as much. Now, interestingly here, this tray seems to be seeing less growth. And this again is why we do replicates. So definitely less growth overall on this tray. A little bit of mold in there, but I'm not too worried about that. I probably will give these just a quick uh, hydrogen peroxide spray, which is what I would do in both the commercial and home production system uh, in that regard, just to make sure uh, I can control what's there. Once you uncover your crop, it's very rare that the mold spreads, actually. Usually it's, it's quite isolated. Uh, by using a sanitizer at this point, it actually gives a chance for the, the, the uh, microgreens within that moldy area to recover. And they don't always do so, but we're trying to give them an effort. So I'll hold this one up here so you can see it as well. And it's hard to, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but uh, definitely less growth on, on this tray here. So what I will do now is I'll go through just like I did with the wheatgrass and I'll take a picture of every cell. Um, it's interesting at this point, I seem to be noticing, it's actually, it's hard to know, but it's almost like I'm noticing some better growth on the higher densities, even though this one here, yeah, like this is, this one here has quite low, you know, low growth uh, at 11.5 grams, but this one at 14.2 and 12.4 seem to be doing okay. Um, some variation in there in terms of the um, germination. Similar here, like it's, it's hard to compare these two because one is growing a little better than the other, uh, which is why I like to do the pictures. And what I kind of do is by scrolling through the pictures at, at, at a certain speed, gives me a little bit more insight into what's actually, um, what's actually happening. Uh, it's hard to make a measurement here. You know, I really want to do a measurement of height, but on a tray like this, what am I measuring? Am I measuring these few tall ones here or am I measuring these? And even then I've got tall ones, medium, and I've got ones that are lower down. So germination is a little, is not quite uniform. Now that said, this is something I already know about this lot of seed is that uh, it has seed of different sizes and because they are of different sizes, they germinate at different rates and they grow at different rates. So this is something I would expect. Um, so it, it is something I already know from growing full trays. So again, um, just like the first, um, like the wheatgrass, uh, I was hoping to do more assessment at this point, but, but really it's just a, a qualitative assessment. And what I will do, uh, which I did do with the wheatgrass, uh, sort of uneventfully, is do a, a one to five evaluation on disease. So the way I'll do that in this case is find the ones that are the worst diseases and those are my ones. 
the ones that are, the, that are the least diseased, and those are my fives, and I will rate everything else relative to that. So we will see some more variation in these than we did in the wheatgrass. So that will give us a little bit of an indicator. And then I'll also be looking, are we seeing the same, uh, the same densities being diseased in, in both? And, and I wouldn't assume that at all. This looks fairly random, not even on the most densely sowed ones. So this could be an issue of airflow, temperature relative to where the window is, uh, moisture content in, in these cells as well as the covering cell packs. Lots of things could be taken into consideration. In the end, even, even the trays here with disease, I think are gonna recover and still be fairly fine. But with that disease, we'll definitely see uh, a, definitely a lower, um, a lower yield for sure. It definitely brings the yield down. So this is our sunflower. I'll go through and uh, take, uh, take photos of these. I'll make notes in the uh, spreadsheet about that, which is available. And the link to that is in the discussion or in the comment section. Um, and then I will do a, a quick look at the wheatgrass. Now what I did for the wheatgrass actually was put it under a time lapse overnight with a bit of light. And so that is a little, actually it's a lot of, of straying from what I wanted to do in the sense that it had light overnight. And it wasn't intense light, but it was enough light that it, it's photosynthesizing uh, overnight when it usually wouldn't do that. Once again, not um, how I would usually grow it, but both, um, both of the reps are being exposed to the same treatment. So they're, they're still in similar conditions. So we can compare them to each other and should still get a good indicator of, of growth and, and, and sowing rates. But uh, yeah, it's a little skewed because I went and did that and I just I couldn't help myself. And in the end, it's not a, a great time lapse anyway. So that's just the kind of luck I'm having with those. So, uh, okay, so I'm gonna go do photos and then uh, I'll check back once those are done and I've done my disease rating. Okay, so let me show you how I do my disease rating here. Now, what I've done is I've pulled the uh, I've pulled my cells out and I have actually aligned them by uh, their sowing rate, which in essence may skew my uh, perspective on things. But realistically, I'm still just looking at disease. So I, I pull them all out, and it's part of it is I want to get a look and see if I can see a pattern here. And in a way, I can. I can see the density changing. Um, this being our most heavily seeded, this being our most lightly seeded, going this way and this way. And I can definitely see on this, this heavily seeded one here, there, there is germination. Oh, actually, I am not in order here. See, this is the thing. There we go. Not at all. <laughs> okay. There we go. So this is interesting. This, this one here is at a at uh, sort of in the middle, just a little bit above. And these ones with a higher seeding rate uh, are doing quite well. So, so interesting, but the question is how well they continue to grow. So now what I do is I actually come and I view them from up top because I know this is how I'm gonna see disease the most. And I can see disease here, 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 and here. And this is my worst one here. So this is 8.9 and 8.9 grams per cell is actually my known sowing rate. This is the sowing rate I currently use. So I am seeing disease there. Um, so this is going to be my one. This is my worst looking tray, so it gets a one. Now I'm gonna go through and find a five. And a five is my best looking tray or my most favorable. And there's lots that could be a five. I'm actually gonna pick this 5.3 because it's growing well. I don't see any, any, any um, disease there, so it's a five. So one being unfavorable, five being favorable. Um, you could call it good and bad, um, but that gets a little confusing with disease. If you say this cell is good with disease, does that mean it has a good amount of disease or it's good that it doesn't have disease? So I like to use unfavorable and favorable. Obviously unfavorable is when you have more disease and favorable is when you have less disease. Now I'm just gonna go through them each at a time and give it a rating based on that. So the one here is exactly the same. It's a five as well. And this one's also a five. I'm just putting these right into the spreadsheet right now as well. Both of these. So I see a tiny little bit of disease there, nothing else. So I'm gonna give this one a four and this one a five. Our 8.9 is our one. And it doesn't mean like this is five, you know, a five is five times better than a one. It's just a relative scale. Uh, same thing here, I've got a little bit in here. So I'm gonna give this one here, um, give this one a four as well, because it's similar. Oh, wrong one. 
da, 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 this one was my one. I'm gonna go four there. So this one here, I'm seeing a little more. I see a patch here, a patch here, a patch here. So this one's actually gonna be, uh, and that was my worst. How does it compare to that? Uh, it's about the same. I'm gonna give this a two. It's just a little bit better than our one. 11.5, I'm gonna give this one, I'm gonna give it a three. Because uh, it's got a, it's not heavy, but it, it's in two spots. Same thing here. I'm going to give this one a three. These ones, actually, funnily enough, this one looks a little bit here, a little bit here. I'm going to give these both threes as well. So basically, I've rated these relative to each other. And so I have my one, I have my fives, and uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. That may be a bit of a confusing system. But I can't call this one, say, a five and this one a three. You know, you know, we could say like one is totally diseased and the whole tray is going to die and five is no trace of disease. Uh, but we are going to use the relative scale. Now, it kind of seems to throw things off. Like we're saying the 8.9 is a one out of five. And so we get this perception that there's a huge amount of disease. But we know we're doing a relative scale. And then we're just looking for like how does that same uh, how does that same cell do in the other rep, and how is that going to do? So having very bad disease in the beginning, how is that going to affect its growth later? So maybe a slightly different way you're used to looking at doing a rating system like that, uh, but it is a sort of a known method, and I find it quite effective to compare things just to just within themselves as well. Uh, okay, so now I'll go through and do the photos. Now the way I do this is I'm going to do this a little differently than I did before. So what I did before is, uh, and I can't do the photos now because my camera's in use, is I, I came through, I do them in order of density going from lowest to highest. I took a picture of the uh, number and then I took a picture of the thing over top. And that's just so I have a quick reference. Uh, what I'll do this time just to sort of save time and be a little risky is just do the picture from above. Uh, and then just make sure I keep them in order. And then what I do is I go in and I change the file name. So this is gonna be um, rep1-4.4 is gonna be the file name there. And then I've been putting these into, uh, just storing them in Google Photos and then I can scroll through them very quickly. So I'll basically just do a photo of each one and then these can go back into the trays in the same order they were originally on the map. They'll go into their system here uh, the lights are going to come on any minute now, so they'll be ready onto the regular cycle. And then, uh, I, and I'll give it a bit of water as well. I always like to water uh, when I uncover. And then this goes back into the, uh, goes back in and just basically becomes its, uh, goes onto its regular cycle, and I'll continue to make observations. Now I will take another look at it tonight to see how it does after its first full day of growth. And that's where I think we're going to start seeing differences. We did see that with the wheatgrass, which we'll take a look at. The wheatgrass, after a day of growth, you could see some were a little faster, some were a little slower. And we're going to see more and more of that as the, as the crop cycle progresses. So I'll do the photos, I'll do an analysis on, um, on rep 2, and then uh, water these and put them back, and uh, just do a little bit of closing up after that. And here's a quick look at our wheatgrass, which I actually have outside. That's rep 2. And this is rep one. And we can see some differences already in growth. Uh, this will be a big day, getting lots of light and really nice weather here right now. So what I'm going to do is actually take these in. I'm going to do a single photo of each, uh, just to sort of have a record uh, in the morning again. And uh, yeah, once again, just looking at, uh, <coughs> not taking any measurements yet, but just looking at, I can see some, some doing quite well and others that are not quite as good, but it's hard to tell. Once again, it's hard to tell whether it's a density issue, which we've done intentionally, or if there's other things going on. Definitely some slower growth in some of these, but we saw that in the other tray, one rep doing better than the other. So these are just uh, conditions I need to look at, and uh, it doesn't mean things are a failure, it just means it's a good thing we do reps, and we can see from back, yeah, I can see from the back that that's not a great looking tray. And that's probably my standard seeding rate, so that's just the kind of luck I have. So that's a quick look at wheatgrass. I'll do individual pictures, put those in the spreadsheet, and uh, that'll be mostly it for today. All right, so we've gone through and we've taken the measurements we want from our sunflower. We've taken pictures. We've taken a look at the wheatgrass and taken pictures of those. So now uh, we're just going to kind of keep an eye on things now that they're uncovered to see what growth looks like. 
And now I did two, uh, I did two extra measurements on the sunflower that I didn't do on the wheatgrass. And that was because it was sort of more feasible to do it. So one was the germination rate. I looked at the seeds and I basically estimated like how many seeds germinated. Uh, and so I did that on a one to five scale. And then I did another one, which is vigor, which is separate from germination in the sense that how much growth has it put on. And once again, this is done relative to all the other cells within a tray. So you can see, as we looked at, one tray is much more vigorous than the other, but we're looking at how each cell pack, how vigorous it is related to the other ones within its rep. So, uh, and what I'll do is I'll switch the positions of these two. So whichever one was on the right is now gonna be on the left. That just mixes that up a bit if one of the conditions is a little more favorable. So now it's, it's a watching game. I've given this a water and a spray down, and I didn't actually use a hydrogen peroxide spray. I actually just used an Epsom salt spray, which I find for some reason does a pretty good job controlling the mold. And often once it's uncovered and watered, the mold kind of disappears as long as there's not an excess amount of water. There's very good airflow now over the top of the crop and it's uh, much less likely to, to see any mold issues from here on out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll, uh, by the time this is uploaded, you'll be able to see the images right in the data spreadsheet correlating to uh, each, uh, each uh, cell pack. And we have the second round of images going up for wheatgrass. So take a look at those. Uh, hopefully you find those useful. And we'll check in again tomorrow, which is the beginning of day six, to see how, what growth is looking like. And uh, keep an eye, eye, thing, eye on things over the weekend uh, as Monday is our harvest day for wheatgrass. So we'll do our big assessment then do a cut and weigh and uh, any more qualitative measurements we want to take uh, and make comment on then. Then what we'll do, and I may even get to this beforehand, is we're gonna start making some charts correlating days of growth or seeding rate to, um, to, uh, to the different uh, pieces of data we're collecting. So with sunflower, we'll do that with, uh, you know, uh, seeding rate relative to vigor and germination. Uh, and then for uh, wheatgrass, we didn't really do uh, those, the, the germ and vigor, but we'll start correlating it to height and uh, harvest weight when we look at harvest time. So those will create some charts to see if we're seeing any patterns uh, within the seeding rates. I can already see we're not gonna get the results I think that I'm expecting. Uh, I think there's some, potentially some flaws in the methodology or just some precision that really needs to be considered when using these cell packs. Uh, but we'll take a look at that in future videos as we sort of break down what worked and what didn't in this experiment. So when we go and do it again, we're correcting those mistakes to get much better results. So that's the, uh, the end of our uh, uncovering aspect of sunflower. Now we're into the growth stage with both sunflower and wheatgrass, and I'm looking forward to making observations over the next few days.